This video will show you how to configure your Windows-based system for development in Android. The objectives are listed here with a timeline for when they appear in the video. Okay, so let's walk through the process of getting our development environment set up so we can start working in Android. I'm starting by going to this URL, which I just have stated larger here in Notepad for your ease of viewing. And we'll see, we see this link here that says download the SDK for Windows. Now the installation I'm going to do is going to be for Windows 7. And I'm using the Chrome browser to walk through this demo. If you do click here on other platforms, however, you'll see that the first two other platforms actually still deal with Windows. This is a .zip file that contains the Android SDK, the Android Software Development Kit. And you can just download and unzip that. And then this link and this link are the same. And that's an installer that goes out and checks some dependencies for you, such as checking to make sure you have a Java JDK installed on your machine, which is required. And then we also have the links here for Mac and Linux. And so one of the things this is going to do is it's going to make sure that you have a Java JDK installed on your machine. And if you don't, you could just go ahead and install that right now. And when it checks to see if you have that installed, it may not find it when it could actually be there. And so one of the things you might need to do is just set up an environment variable to say, yes, my Java is here. You just didn't find it. Let's talk about what all that means. So if you installed a 64-bit version of the Java JDK and used the default installation path, likely what you have is in your program files folder, you'll have a Java directory, and you'll have a JDK folder, your Java development kit. And this will be the path, this path right here, to where your Java, 64-bit Java JDK is. Okay, now if you're on a 32-bit computer, and I've gone ahead and installed a 32-bit version on my computer as well, you'll have a Java directory, and you'll have a JDK, and this will represent the path to your JDK on a 32-bit computer. So in both cases, we have a Java JRE, the Java runtime environment, which just allows us to run a Java program. And we have a Java JDK, the required software that we'll need to have installed. That's the Java development kit that allows us to write Java programs. So I mention that only because when we run this installer, it's going to reach out and look to see whether or not it can find an installation of the JDK on your system. If not, it's going to stop and force you to install it. So if you haven't installed it, you might as well go ahead and install it now. But let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm going to click download my SDK. Anything that takes a long period of time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, edit out to the largest degree. So that download is finished, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and start the installer in, pro in motion. Yes, I want to allow it to make changes to my computer. Brings up the Android SDK Tools Setup Wizard, and we click Next. And here's the point where it says, Detect whether the Java SE development environment was on my computer. And it did find my installation of Java. Now, a couple things you might need to do. If you didn't have Java installed in your computer, all you would have wanted to do is come out to a web browser and type in Java JDK. And your first hit is going to be the download site at Oracle for Java SE downloads. If you click on that, the first area here, Java download for your JDK, you click on that again, and me, I'm on a 64-bit installation of Windows. I'm going to accept the licensing agreement. And I'm going to go ahead and click on download the 64-bit installation. Now, there's actually an update. So I'll go ahead and install the update to make sure this is abundantly clear. So I now have a 94 megabyte Java JDK installing on my system. So I'll edit out some of the download time. And you can just pause if you're following along step by step. OK, so we have the Java JDK installer downloaded. Let's go ahead and click on that to execute it. 
Go ahead and click yes to give it permission to install. And it's saying, I'd like to install the Java SE 7 Update 5. And it's also going to try to install this Java FX on us. We don't need that for what we're doing, so we can just abort that if we don't want to install it at the end. And you see we are a 64-bit installation, so we're putting it in the program files directory. We can click next. Now it's asking us about also in installing the Java JRE. We click next. That's actually successful now. We click continue. And at this point, it's asking us if we want to install the Java FX. And, and I'm not going to be working with that, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel out. And the Java JDK is still installed. This is just aborting installing the Java FX, which is fine. Are you sure you want to exit? Yes. So now we've successfully installed a Java JDK. If I come back to my C drive and take a closer look in my program files directory Java we'll see I have my old installation of Java Java 1.7004 and then I've got the new one I just installed 1.705 so it had some kind of minor update now interesting enough let's go ahead and run our installer again previously it found that one which one is it going to find now I want to discuss a common pitfall that I often see happen during the installation so let's go ahead and back up and click next again. It's looking and it still found the 04. It didn't find the 05 and why is that? Oftentimes, and I'm going to cancel out this installation, you can actually have Java installed on your system or even multiple installations of Java installed on your system, the JDK, and the installer will, even, will either not find the Java or find the wrong version of Java that you don't want to use. And how do you overcome that? Well, if you come into your control panel and click on System, you can come into Advanced System Settings and set up an environment variable. And the environment variable you want to set up, which may not be there before if you haven't done a lot of software development, is this Java Home. This isn't always necessary. It's necessary if the installer is not finding your installation of Java. It allows it to find that environment variable and say, hey, this is where your Java lives. If that's not there, all you have to do to create it is hit the New button. I'm going to click the Edit button instead. It'll come up looking just like this. And type in Java underscore home and then come out to your Java installation and enter into that directory. Click on the little folder right here and copy and paste in the full path to just inside that JDK folder into where this variable value is and click OK. So notice what I just did. I changed mine from version 04 to version 05 and click OK, updating that environment variable. Again, this may not always be necessary, but if you see a message about I can't find your Java, and you know it's there, then you want to set this environment variable to the path of where your Java lives. I'm going to click OK and OK. I'm going to come back in and just go ahead and run that installer again for the sake of being abundantly clear. So again, I'll pause while that's downloading and be back in a minute. Okay, so our installer is nearly downloaded again. Let's go ahead and click on that and give it a run again. Starts the setup wizard. And notice this time it found the underscore 05 version because I went up, I went in and updated my Java underscore home variable. So all that's not clearly stated in the setup directions on the Android website, that's something that you may need to do is set up that Java underscore home variable. So I'll go ahead and select my brand new installation of Java and click next. And then we can say install for just me or install for everyone on this computer. I'm the only one on this computer with a single account, so I'm just going to install it just for me. And then here's the next thing it asks, where do you want to install this? I like mine at the very top. Now, a couple things to mention here. I like to create a folder 
in my root directory of C called Android instead of burying it all the way down. So that's where I'm going to put my installation. And side note, if we had selected other platforms and chose this zip folder and unzipped, it would have been in a folder called Android-SDK-Windows. So I actually prefer to name my folder under the same format that it's installed in this zip folder if we just choose to grab this one and unzip it. So I'm going to give it the name dash windows. And that's where I'm going to install my Android software development tools. And that's going to go ahead and install all those tools into that directory. Now, let's go ahead and bump back and take a look at the documentation on the website now. And click the installing the SDK and follow through the rest of these steps. And if we read through the instructions on this website, all it's really going to say is once the SDK tools setup wizard has finished running, start the SDK manager. And the checkbox is checked. So all we have to do is click finish to start the SDK manager. So I'm going to do that and click next to go to the next part of the web page. And it talks about adding platforms and packages and talks about several things you should download right here under recommended packages. So this window right here is this window right here that was brought up for us when we selected to go ahead and run the SDK manager. So where are we at so far? This SDK Manager, Software Development Kit Manager, it helps us to manage our software development kit. And there are several versions of Android out there. And that's what all these are. Android 1.5, 1.6, 1.2, and so on. All the versions of Android we can build against. And we want to install several of these on our system so that we can build against different versions of Android. We're going to examine a little bit more about market share and which versions we might want to build against as we go. So before we download those, let's just take a quick look at Android API market share. And this chart on the Android developer website shows the API levels and their current percentage of market share as of July 2nd, 2012. The only thing missing from this chart is Jelly Bean API 16 that was recently introduced. And we can look here and see, well, there's not much reason to try to still support API 3, 4, and 7, as very little of the market share is there, maybe 5% combined. But we would probably want to do everything we could to support API 8 and above to have our applications open to the largest possible percentage of Android devices. And for the purposes of these videos, I'm primarily going to build against just API level 10. And most of our early on development we're going to look at just in regards to Android being an operating system that runs on phones. And then later on, we're going to take a look at a few things happening also on tablets. And when we do, we'll do that by building against the latest and greatest API, which when I first started doing these videos was API 15, Ice Cream Sandwich. And then about halfway through the video series, Jelly Bean comes out, API 16. And when that occurs in this video series, you'll see that we may do some things with Jelly Bean as well. So, in terms of getting started today, what does that mean? 